Welcome to MathCast edition 11, where we'll be using algebraic patterning to factor trinomials. This will be an introduction to decomposition, and it will be looking at three skill sets that are independent in this particular MathCast, but we'll bring them together to form something called decomposition. So the three skill sets are finding the numbers, common factoring, extended, and group factoring, which is again another form of common factoring, but with a little twist. So skill set one, finding the numbers. The first skill deals with number recognition. So we will be looking for two numbers that multiply for a given value, P in this case, which stands for product, and add for a given value, S, which stands for sum. I use the following sentence on a regular basis, and I found it helps to keep my thoughts straight on what I'm looking for. It goes like this. I need two numbers that multiply for P and add for S. And you replace the P and the S with whatever the numbers might be. So let's look at example one. I'm setting P to 8 and S to 6. So I need two numbers that multiply for 8 and add for 6. Okay. So some of you might be able to get those numbers very quickly, but what I'd like you to consider first is come up with all the possible combinations that will multiply for 8 and then check to see if they actually add or sum for 6. So when I take a look at these numbers here, 1 times 8 is definitely 8, but when I add 1 and 8 together they sum for 9. So that is not an acceptable solution. Negative 1 times negative 8, again, the multipl multiplication of those two together gives me 8, but when I sum them I get negative 9. 2 and 4 multiply for 8 and they add for 6 so that combination is the one I'm looking for and just to double check the last one negative 2 and negative 4 multiply for 8 but they sum for negative 6 so my choice here is 2 and 4 let's try it again with another two numbers we'll look at negative 12 as the product and the sum is negative 1 so I need my little sentence here. I need two numbers that multiply for negative 12 and add for negative 1. So if you'd like to take a minute and think about that. Here are some possible combinations that I came up with. And again, I want to multiply the two together. You'll notice that all of these multiply for negative 12. Then I just need to check whether they add or sum for negative 1. So if I take a minute here to check, I have a sum of 11, a sum of 11, negative 4, 4, 1, and lastly I have negative 1. So my combination that only that works would be negative 4 and 3, and you may wish to pause this video right now and have a look at that and make sure you understand where those came from. Our second skill set is common factoring extended. So we're going to look at common factoring problems again, but again, we'll be extending them past what we've seen so far. And this is a bit of a pattern approach here, so you need to watch carefully. Please pause at any time you need to stop and look at what's going on. Rewind it if you have to. If I wish to common factor 5x plus 10, I can see that both pieces have a great, the greatest common factor is 5, so both pieces have a 5 in them. If I common factor that out front, I'm left with an x plus 2 inside the bracket. Again, please pause this if you need to review this. Continuing with that pattern, I'm going to tweak it a little bit. And instead of having a number common to both, I'm going to put a capital A common in both terms. So even though it's a capital A and not a number, it's still common and I can factor that out. So you'll notice I have a capital A out front and x plus 2 left inside the brackets. If you compare that to the one above, the A and the 5 are very similar. Keeping with that idea, instead of just putting an A now, I'm actually going to put an AB. So again, Slight modifications, just expanding the idea of common factor. So I should notice that a capital A and a capital B are common to both terms. So when I factor those out, they sit out front. And again, I'm left with the x plus 2 
inside the brackets. You may wish to pause it here and have a look at that a little more thoroughly. Moving forward, I'm now going to take the A and the B and split them up by addition. So you'll notice the whole bracket is common to both terms. So even though they're split by addition, they're exactly the same. So I can actually factor out an A plus B. And we can see quite clearly there's one in both of those terms. Tweaking that one just a little bit, instead of A plus B, I can introduce a number. A plus 3 is now inside the bracket and common to both terms. So what I'm looking at is this term here and this term here both have an A plus 3 in them. So I can common factor that out and I'm left with a plus 3 out front and x plus 2 still in the brackets. My final pattern here, instead of a plus 3, I'm going to make it x plus 3. And just like these were common to both, I can common factor out a bracket of x plus 3. I'm left with an x plus 2, and I've now moved into the final state that I wish to have this. So perhaps pause it now, have a look, see if you can see the pattern before I continue on with the next part. Our final skill set is group factoring. And again, this is another extension of common factoring. And here we go. So if I wish to factor this question right here, if I look at all four terms, which is new, the first two terms have a capital A, the first and third terms have an X, and the third and fourth terms have a common factor of 2. But there is nothing that is common to all four terms. So no common factor amongst all four terms. Group factoring lets me take this problem and split them up a little bit. So if I looked at just the first two terms, I would see they have a common factor of A. If I looked at the last two terms, I would see they have a common factor of 2. So what I'm going to do is common factor the first two terms and common factor the last two terms separately. And I've split that up with a bit of space around the addition sign. So if we look, we can see the common factor of A has come out in the first two, and the common factor of 2 has come out in the second two terms. If I rewrite them just a little bit closer together, you'll see that we have the same example from one slide ago and that there's an x plus 5 common to both of these now and so I can actually factor that out. Pause it there and have a look. This is a tricky skill set and it's worth reviewing several times before I go to the next example. So my next example is x squared plus 7x plus 2x plus 14 now if I wish to factor these again, you can see there is not an x term common to all of them. There is no number common to all of them. But what I am going to do is I'm going to try and group factor. So I will split them up visually so I can see my first two terms against my last two terms. Out of the first two terms, you may be able to recognize that there is an x common. Out of the last two terms, you can recognize there is a 2 common. So it looks like this. So I have common factored the first two and common factored the second two terms. I'll write them a little closer together. And hopefully you start to notice a pattern here that there is an x plus 7 in both terms. So there's an x plus 7 here and here, which means I should be able to factor it out as well. And that would be common factoring. And I end up with x plus 7 times x plus 2.